Uh, let us start this Abhuduta Gita or Samhita with this wonderful sloka. It is the first chapter and twelve verse of the Ashtavakra Samhita. Atma Shakshi Bibhu Purna Ekamukta Chidakriyaha Asango Nispriha Shanto Brahmat Samsara Vaniva. Because the students of this Ashtavakra Samhita they know that this is the ultimate truth and in all pages in different verses is a 20 chapters are there and each chapter almost containing either eight verses almost and everywhere it says that Atma is the Shakshi Atman that consciousness and that is the Bhivu all-pervading it is the witness, it is all pervading, it is full, it is one and it is liberated, it is the consciousness, it is inactive and it has no second person to have the company and no desire, nispriya and therefore it is tranquil, shanto. The self is witness, all pervading, perfect. It is without second, it is free, as a conscious, unattached, desireless, and this is tranquil. This is the, the whole teaching, and it goes between the, the our teacher and the disciple. And Ashtabhakra is the teacher, Janaka is the disciple. And why then we think about the samsara? all these things that all around us then it says brahmat samsara vaniva this consciousness brahmat because of the wrong conception ni science as they call it agyana it seems that it is constantly changing friends we have already studied the 12th chapter but a few things that we will uh, recapitulate from the 12th and then go to the 13th chapter today. The 13th chapter is called happiness. And the last month when we were discussing, as a, it is called the detachment that the Janaka, the t student, he is mentioning. And he is detaching himself from three different types of work. This is very important. With the moment we think about the detachment, we think about, nowadays it is a very common word, social distance, the detachment. And we are detached from our work, from our friends. But this detachment is physical detachment, then the vocal detachment, then the mental detachment. The what is tyaga? That is the complete tyaga that here the Janaka is teaching us is the Kaya, Vachika and Chinta. Kaya, Vachika, Chinta that means in physically I am not going to do anything. Vachika in the vocal that also I am not going to do anything and Chinta mentally also I am not going to do anything. So this is a very very special conception and we need complete attention to understand this subtlety. It says that aham evam eva astitaha I am residing like this without any action. Physical action means it is not about the work other worldly work. It talks about the spiritual work. Physically what we do? We do the the, in the temple we do puja and we collect the flowers, we paste the sandal uh, wood and like this, like that. So many physical work we do for our spiritual development. 
the physical work for the realization of the God. This is one thing. Second, Bachika, we read holy books and we also go on chanting the name of God, do the japa and chinta mentally, we meditate. Now, Janaka says, for one who is traveling the path of knowledge, this three action is taboo. He should not practice these three. Why? Because Atman do not do anything. It is already present. Why should you do that? So we will slowly, slowly develop this. We will see that how things are taking shape. And ultimate thing is happiness. That is in the 13th chapter he will be speaking. We are reading that uh, from the 12th chapter. And this stage, the last of the falling, is the path of knowledge. This stage means ultimate stage that I am that self, I am that Atman. When we know that I am this, why should I work? It's not necessary. Why should I think? It is not necessary. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, in one of his and the conversation in the gospel, you will find, suddenly he is giving an example when the Master Bhashai, the recorder of the gospel, when he entered the room, Immediately, with a, a, the smile, the Lord said, Sri Ramakrishna said, Now, since you have come, we won't talk about you. As because you were not here, we were talking about you, and we were talking that Mahendra is an educated person, Mahendra is of this age, Mahendra lives in Calcutta, Mahendra, all these things about you, we were talking. Now the moment you have come, we are not going to discuss about you, but at the same time, we are enjoying your presence. So when things are present already, why should we have to take the name of God, or do the puja, or meditation? It is already there, completely present. So this is the three stages. The first is the thought. It is subtle. It flows like a strong flow of the water river. What is the thought? Thought is the combination of desire. And in the ultimate spiritual life, what is the desire? Realization of the God. But that is also a thought. And the moment it is a thought, it is an action. And the moment it is an action, that means you are not realized. So this is the first step. Friends, again, to remind, we are discussing about the highest Vedanta. The, from the highest Vedantic point of view, you are that. Tattvam asi. You are that. What is that? The soul, the Atman. The if, that self, the soul, the Atman, the Brahman, I am, then why should I have to go and ask this man and that man, who am I, who am I? So that, the Guru is telling, try to understand these, I am that. So no thought should be there. Why? It is not necessary to think about myself, I am that. The second is, the expression of the desire is the word, Bachika. When I am taking the name of God, the obviously, I am going to reach to the God. So I am going on holding to the names and taking the name of God, the Bachika. The path of knowledge do not approve that. Constantly you have to think that I am that. So here there is no God's name. You are that God. Are you going to repeat your name? So no Bachika. And to fulfill the desire, we work physically, and finally it comes that the thought, meditation. On whom I am meditating, and why should I meditate? I am concentrating, withdrawing my mind from different objects, and then I am focusing that mind on that particular object, which I have not achieved. That is meditation. 
Meditation means what? Meditation means collecting the mind which is connected with many other things and I collect that and then I focus that mind on a particular thing which I want to achieve. But here it is not necessary. So the Janaka is telling it is not necessary. So I am that God. Why should I do all these three actions? These three actions are to realize God. But I know I am that. So this is the condition of the mind. I know I am that. Suppose my name is David. And I know I am David. A child whose name is David, and sometimes he cannot remember that he is David. He is not having the conception, what is this David? But a grown-up person who has become completely attached with the name, and the form, his own personality, he will never ever forget that his name is David. And he is not meditating on David, he is not thinking about David, because he is. So like that, here also, Aham evam eva asthitaha. Now the, those who have realized the Supreme, the Brahma Jnani, they always live in that condition. I am that. How to understand this? Tomorrow we are going to study again the Bhagavata and the three questions that has been asked by the Uddhava to Krishna tomorrow morning. At this time we will discuss that. How we will understand that a person has realized the Brahman, the Atman, the God. Now if you study the by life, the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, a very recent sage, and he is an avatara, an avatara barishta, Swami Vivekananda said, in his life we find expression of all this. He was having everything, and he was so contained it. He was never ever thinking about having the disciples or the name or fame. Nothing was there. And as the avatara, the manifestation of the God, their only work is to establish dharma, and Sri Ramakrishna was establishing dharma, going and talking with people, encouraging them to understand their own self, and at the same time he was showing in his own life. And we find that aham evam eva astita, that position. Janaka, he is mentioning, that the I, the Janaka, he aham evam eva astita. What is that evam eva? No action. And how many actions? Three. One the through the mouth, the bachika, then through the body, kaika, and and the thought, manasa, all this. And suppose we give this example, the classical example again and again given by the Vedantin, the snake has been superimposed on a rope. Now why we think, we the ordinary people, after reading this Ashtabakra, we are thinking, but I don't feel like that. I don't feel that I have realized God. I don't feel that I should not do the japa or meditation. So I should not stop the spiritual practices. Why we think like that? Then the last line it says, because as we were chanting that mantra, by ignorance we are thinking that we are not that. We are thinking that I belong to this world. We are thinking that I am the body-mind complex. We are thinking I am a man, I am a woman, like this. All imagination, Vedanta says, all imagination, is all mystic. The snake has been superimposed. And two different reactions. A person who is ignorant about that, he is shivering, perspiring, he is afraid shouting and crying for help. Another person who knew that it is a rope and not a snake, what is his reaction? Nothing. 
the same way in the Upanishad they talk about two birds one bird of the same plumage the one bird sitting on the top of the tree not doing anything no action but the second bird is hopping from one branch to another and tasting different fruits sometimes bitter sometimes sweet and experiencing either joy or the pain so it goes on like this these two birds they are of the same plumage in the Upanishad they say that means the same Brahman but one is attached with ignorance with the body with the form with the mind and another is completely free so what will happen and that is the thing and Janaka now in the seventh verse of the twelfth chapter he is telling achintam chintamanyopi chinta rupam bhajatiso achintam the supreme self is not an object how can you thought about it anything which is not object it is a subject can you think about that you cannot so obviously the supreme self is not an object hence it is beyond thought but you are thinking those who are meditating on that supreme brahman they create in their own mind an imaginary object and then concentrate on that achintam which is unthinkable chintamana you are thinking how chinta rupam from a form a thought hence janaka who has already realized the supreme self gave that up tasma tat bhavanam taktva aham evam eva astita tasma therefore tat bhavanam that idea that thought taktva what is giving up the those who are following the path of knowledge they they also don't meditate also forget about taking the name of god forget about performing the puja or ritualistic thing they even don't meditate so why because constant the presence i am that is constantly in their mind and their argument is on whom you are meditating and in the upanishad again and again it says the mind cannot go over there the eye cannot go even the sun or no other light can uh, uh, express it or to show it so naturally this is achintam you cannot think about it things that we are thinking it must be having some name and form otherwise we cannot think our thought can be only up to that which is having a name and form and on the basis of that slowly slowly we develop now the scientists all over the world trying hard to find out a solution a medicine for the coronavirus how they're trying to do it they're trying to figure out they're trying to find out the characteristic of this particular thing how it is taking the form taking the shape then antidote how it can be curved it can be stopped so name and form is there though they can't see it but name and form is still there very subtle very difficult to understand but the scientists are trying to do it but without the name and form you cannot meditate the all over the world the different laboratories the scientists are concentrating on this particular problem why there is an object and on that object they are concentrating but when there is no object how can you concentrate so that that is exactly the janaka is mentioning achintam chinta mannopi chinta rupam bhajatyaso you are worshiping this also how by forming a, th a form a thought but how you are forming it through your thought you are just imagining that way taktva tad bhavanam now i am giving up that bhavana 
that particular thought and what aham eva meva astitaha i remain in myself in the last words of the 12th chapter its result is mentioned and it says what is the result of the realization of oneness what is the result of the realization of the brahman kitartho bhavet and become blessed kritartho bhavet so when some people they think what god realization realization of the brahman what is all that here it is very clearly mentioned that there is no doubt that i am the self i am the brahman i am that consciousness i am all pervading and i don't have any second any one the second the only one is there and when that thought comes kitartho bhavet and completely becomes blessed there is no fear there is no desire and as because there is no desire there is no fear and naturally the happiness and misery these two are also not there this is a wonderful condition of the mind and shankaracharya again and again he is insisting that that is called in when we are leaving when we are in this body we must get this knowledge and then enjoy this life jivan mukti sukha prapti hetave janma dharitam the jivan mukti while leaving i should be completely liberated i am bound with some thoughts what are the thoughts that i am a male i am a female i am a father i am a mother i am a son i am a daughter i am this i am that so many different ideas and my all relatives and all these things i am thinking and obviously i am attached to them their happiness is bringing my happiness their suffering also bringing the suffering in my mind so that is a condition because of the ignorance but when we can overcome that eva meva kritam yena sakitartho bhavet aso in the last verse of the 12th chapter the 8th verse it says eva meva kritam yena sakitartho bhavet aso again it says eva meva svabho ya sa kitartha bhavet aso the spiritual practices end in inaction eva meva kritam yena sakitartha it is like after reaching the goal one only rest in peace kitartha bhavet aso now we were going to reach to some place or to meet to some person what happened so many actions the first i think that i should go to that place second i think about some vehicle through which i will go and then third i am traveling and in when i am drive driving there are many things that may happen and then f- that way i am thinking and then i'm all this action goes away ultimately when i go and i reach to that particular place i meet the person whom for whom i was traveling then what happens all the action goes away and only a peace and happiness that prevails so it says sakitartha bhavet when we are going to that janaka after realization he is giving all this but those like us we are trying to realize that what should be our position let us talk to that too we should not think that that one one time shami vivekananda said do what i say don't do what i do why these people are already realized so their actions are completely different when all people are meditating shami ji is sleeping why he said i could not sleep for last 2 3 days and if we think oh shami ji is sleeping i am also sleep 
that's a mistake i will do because swami ji is for sleep or awake and whatever in all condition he was that knowledge he never forgot that even from his childhood that's why sri ramakrishna said don't remind him about his self the moment he will understand that he will give up his body so it was almost sri ramakrishna for his own work for the establishment of the dharma righteousness he was compelling swami vivekananda not to think about his own self it's a completely different personality janaka also the same way he said i am not doing anything no japa no meditation no puja so we have to understand our position where we are if we can think in that way and can become completely inaction inactive okay then it is for you or otherwise why we are studying this is the ultimate goal this is the ultimate knowledge this is the place where i have to go so but my steps are counting one after another but nothing wrong in understanding the goal so that is why we are studying this wonderful vedantic treatise the ashtavakra samhita evam ev kritam yena sakritartha bhavet asu spiritual practices end in inaction janaka the blessed soul discussing about this happiness in 13th chapter but here we find in that is a meaning of this the last it says blessed is the man who has accomplished this blessed is he who is such by nature blessed is the person who has accomplished this evam eva kritam yena sa kritartha one who has already accomplished what is the accomplishment knowledge what swami vivekananda to give the definition of religion he said religion is realization is the definition of religion religion is realization given by shami vivekananda what is to realize i am that that is to realize i am that consciousness that we should realize and then what happens that is the end of religion and all these things that we do visiting the holy places and fasting or taking the name of god or meditation only process to reach over there these are all the systems that we are practicing to reach over there and ultimately it becomes the one swami vivekananda again he said religion is a process that makes a brute unto man man unto god this so easily and for simple language he is giving the definition of religion and millions of people are confused about religion that the religion is very simple thing we have to go to god and god that we have to acquire all the qualities of the god those who are dualist that is their goal and those who are monist thinking about ultimate in the advaita knowledge they will see he everything is nothing but the self there is only one what happened they evam eva kritam yena sakritartha they become blessed after acquiring this knowledge after reaching to the goal they become blessed and it becomes the swabhava it becomes their nature and never changes i realized god today and then again i am thinking about something else of the worldly prosperity no that cannot be that means something wrong in the realization once you realize that and nothing else remain to achieve or to get bhagwan sri ramakrishna is telling if i knew this world is true i would have full the whole my birthplace this kamar pukur with gold that means it is useless to achieve all these worldly prosperities and other things for those who are trying to realize the truth now janaka is going to the 13th chapter 
and the very first verse of the 13th chapter he says akinchanam bhavam swastham kaupinatve api durlabham tyaga adane bihaya asmat aham ase yatha sukham aham ase yatha sukham now swastham means tranquility here the meaning of the word swastha usually swastha means the physically health and all that it says swastha means tranquility the tranquility of mind and this is very very difficult so the janaka is telling even the kopinatte api durlabham even those who are having the loin clothes only and nothing they have given up everything of this world that means the sanyasins the monk even for them it is very very difficult the this is possible when one become confirm that there is nothing but the self akinchana bhavam akinchana akinchana bhavam there is nothing in this world except that self it is really really durlabham even the monks also cannot achieve it akinchanam bhavam swastham kopunatte api durlabham tyaga adane now the two words he is using one is tyaga and adane one become monk or sanyasin by giving up his all possessions so we first we leave our hearth and home then whatever in the ramakrishna mission system you cannot have your own bank account you cannot have your other possessions so obviously if everything the so called worldly things you have to give up who is renouncing now this is the question now ultimately who is renounce i have renounced it i was the student of such and such university i have this type of certificate my father was so and so and i all this thing when you are telling means the consciousness of i the ego is remaining that means no tyaga so we have to ultimately reach to that very subtle way the tyaga means external and tyaga internal the sanyasi should give up external and internal both but that is exactly what bhagwan sri ramakrishna is telling external and internal this is for the sanyasins this is for the monks this is for the renouncers but for the householders bhagwan sri ramakrishna say mentally you give up but externally you should keep it up you keep up you leave but mentally become completely detached so it is very difficult for the householders because mentally you have to be completely detached at the same time externally you are into that for the ramakrishna mission monk this is also the same thing we have our organization we have different institutions you know in india and other places they have the schools the colleges and the universities and hospitals and one monk is in charge so naturally he will be thinking that this belongs to me i am the in charge i am these are all mine wrong externally of course but internally no it is belongs to the organization any time i may go away so these two things so who is the tyaga tyaga means completely giving up not only externally internally also so i with the as long as the i is there it has to be now it becomes subtle also suppose nothing is there but at the same time because you are practicing the spirituality the spirituality means the love when that pure love generates within you attract people automatically is as, as an example they say when there is a fire all the moths they are attracted to that when there is a flower all the bees will be attracted to that automatically you need not to go and invite them the similarly when you become a pure hearted monk sanyasi the people will come and when they come naturally they will praise they will give you the gift they will serve you 
and slowly slowly ego start generating this is for me and for me tasmat janaka is telling therefore tyage adane bihaya i am not giving up anything i am not accepting anything this is a very peculiar situation mentally i am not giving up anything everything is there all around and i am not accepting also anything so this point if we can understand then we will understand what is called tyaga in the upanishad it says tyage nai ke amritatmana suhu without the tyaga you cannot get the amritat amritat means the eternity and what is that eternity is not the physically but you belong you become the brahman which is eternal so you become brahman how through tyaga what you are giving up this is the question i have nothing to give up as because all things that i see in this world including my body and mind it doesn't belong to me this is a imagination in the when we see the dream and in the dream what i give up in the dream only and i am a very rich man and there is a very wonderful story bhagwan sri ramakrishna in his parable that he is telling then one person got up from the sleep he was a farmer and he found the wife is wailing crying what happened he said that my son our only son uh, he is dying because of the snake bite the man got up and he was looking at that dead body of the son and he was quietly sitting then the wife came and naturally the reaction the have you become the stone minded your mind has become stone you cannot cry even for your only son who is dying he said no the problem is i am thinking in the dream just before uh, this in the dream i saw that i am a king and i am having seven sons now when the dream broke i find myself that i am a peasant i am a cultivator and i am having one son now i am confused which is true the dream one or the present one so this is the way the vedanta in they give the stories tyage adani what i am going to give up because nothing is nothing belongs to me why should i give up how can i give up it doesn't belong to me suppose i go to somebody's house and there is a beggar and i see that there is a golden bangle can i take that golden bangle and give it to the beggar no that is that doesn't belong to me i cannot give that so same same way when you are in this body and mind friends we have to think so very clearly i am though living in this body though living in this society to living in this environment having friends and relatives but i don't belong to this that is the path of knowledge and therefore i have nothing to give up as because nothing belongs to me not even the body not even the mind i forget about other wealth so tyage adani giving up that means the renunciation and acceptance the janaka is telling i have given up that both i am not giving it up and i am not also accepting you know the janaka was rajarshi raja plus rishi raja means the administrator he is having a kingdom he is having so many things you can imagine a king everything belongs to him and at the same time he was a rishi rishi means who is not having anything any possession of this world so this two are combined in the janaka and that is the reason the highest they always consider the monk he also the son of the veda vyasa he went to janaka to get the advice about the atman so this janaka when he is telling the tasmat 
tagi in renunciation adani in acceptance be higher the accepting or renouncing both i have given up why nothing belongs to me i am just doing what i have to do that's all aham ase yatha sukham i live happily aham ase yatha sukham i am living very happily how it is possible when you are completely detached so this is the point why we suffer because we have the attachment and sometimes detachment we think mentally that i am detached detached from what there is nothing that you can detest the sometimes some people they will say we are holy people so obviously we should not talk about or mix about or touch about all this thing which is unholy what is holy and which is unholy nothing remains so what is gyana what is knowledge again let us go back to the story of sri ramakrishna the one person came apparently he was a mad person he was shouting the people were afraid and sri ramakrishna looked at him and immediately understood that he is a gyani he went and when he prayed to the mother ma kali in the dakshineshwar whole temple was as if trembling because of his chanting the mantra then he was going away and he was hungry he saw that a dog is eating something he took some that portion which the dog was eating and one bread from the mouth of the dog and ate the people are thinking that he is a stark mad but sri ram krishna told no he is a gyani and ask his uh, d- a disciple go and ask him how i will know that i have achieved the knowledge as this question so he went and from distance he was afraid from distance he asked sir how i will know that i have achieved the knowledge you know the reply in reply he said when the holy water of the ganga and the dirty water of this canal will be same to you then only you have achieved the knowledge so we have to understand this is not a the that version of the are just some uh, words of the mad person no knowledge means everything is same and it is not there actually nothing is there nothing but the God. so here it says akinchanam bhavam sastvam kopunitte kopina kopinitte opi durlabham tyaga adane bihaya asmat aham ase yathasukam so that is the the greatest thing to even the monks also cannot understand in the second verse janaka pointed out in the 13th chapter the spiritual practices for the realization of the brahman involve three actions body and the the tongue and the mind that means the penance study and meditation these actions presupposes that self has not been realized one who is practicing these that means he has not realized the brahman sri ramakrishna is to practice this i why i am giving the example of sri ramakrishna again and again because all this teaching it's so subtle teaching and very high spiritual value the ultimate advaita vedanta it has been practiced by sri ramakrishna and we can see it vividly demonstrated in the life of sri ramakrishna the sri ramakrishna in the beginning of his life he was practicing meditation prayer and also the japa and he used to worship and the all those things he used to do and ultimately all those things gone away then sri ramakrishna was thinking the what has happened to me i cannot go to god and can worship no ritual i can perform and i cannot meditate i cannot take the name of god the moment i have just started counting i go into samadhi what has happened to me 
he is describing it not that he never knew he knew it but for the others the people should understand so he was asking it to the bhairavi brahmani the bhairavi brahmani then explained quoting from the scripture that those who have already realized god these actions become inaction the karma akarma bhavati and action become completely inaction or their actions are not necessary so that is also the same thing we find in the janaka he is telling the conforming his own position janaka said i don't need all these practices as i am purusharthe sthita sukham i live happily without any action and we look at the sri ramakrishna's life and his picture all the time he is in great joy the shami vivekananda said who is sri ramakrishna he said l o v e personified he was the love personified and all the time that great joy whoever went near him with a open mind with a pure soul and he received that joy from him so this is uh, the action is only for those who have not realized and inaction for those who have already realized but one needs food and countering this their question is coming okay you are not working you are no action is there but you need food to survive you need clothing you need shelter what about that that is also action in the bhagavad gita we find they says even the blinking is an action everything that you do is nothing but the action so obviously one who is claiming that i have realized the brahman and i don't have any action what about his survival about his food now here the janaka he is giving the answer he said the self never do anything the self is completely inactive he is not doing anything then what we how we are acting only through the organs the mind and the physical organs they are working i am completely detached from that so this is also the subtle very subtle vedanta i am not doing anything i self is not doing anything but it is that reflection of the same i which is on the mind which is on the buddhi and associated all the organs they are active i am not the here the i means not the body not the mind not the personality but the self and the self is completely detached artho anartho name sthita gatya na shayane na ba tishtan gachan sapan tasmat aham yatha sukham in the 13th chapter in the fifth verse he the janaka is telling the no good or evil accrues to me by staying going sleeping so whether i stay go or sleep i live happily and the way he is expressing is really wonderful he is telling nothing is attached to me so obviously nothing is acting on me no reaction on me so this we if we can understand when you are successful people are appreciating and obviously automatically it comes to the mind that oh i am doing it wrong the moment that thought will cross the mind that i am doing people are appreciating me that means i have not reached to that goal nothing no reaction will be there that is why swami vivekananda again another life now this is a theory has this been applied yes and we find shami vivekananda he was a great success and we cannot imagine in those days an indian a subjugated country 
and after he is coming from there to a completely unknown place and there when he addressed he completed the, his address the 7000 people one lady who was there present in our memoir she has mentioned 7000 people they were trying to reach to him only to touch his shoe or his dress or to shake a hand or to go close to him it was a sight to see then from a distance standing a distance an elderly lady she was telling she has noted i was telling my son now if you can keep your mind quiet then i will accept you as god of course afterwards luckily she got swami vivekananda as her guest swami vivekananda went to her so this is though the people they were appreciating vivekananda vivekananda was not not that he was oh no i am not going to accept all this appreciation i will go away he didn't do that he was there looking at them perhaps waving the hand perhaps giving them the thanks in the indian way but at the same time no reaction was there when he went back to india and this was the first time after almost 1000 years of subjugation the indians got the the joy of freedom someone is successful so vivekananda went back to india and hundreds of students they started dragging his chariot and then thousands of people all over both the sides of the road they were waiting there and this way he was getting the applauses and people were shouting the glory to vivekananda and what was his reaction he said please don't say that i did nothing whatever my master has asked me to do i did if you have to say the glory it is unto him and afterwards after all the success when he completed the the belur mat and the monastic organization and all these things was over he was just like any other ordinary monk used to live in the belur mat and taking care of the the goat and there was a, his very pet dog and all those things very simple way he used to live no ego at all how it is possible because here in the uh, when we ashtabhakta that we are reading janaka is telling arthe anartho name sthitva gatya na shayane na ba tishtan gachan swapan tasmat aham yatha sukham here he says no good or evil acquires to me by staying and going or sleeping i am not attached to anything and that is the reason good and evil are the result of the action and that's why the swami ji's action though we see that he was so active in one day he used to give talk of 8 to 10 speeches in those days there is no microphone we can imagine how much the pressure he used to give on his voice the throat and 10 day uh, times in a day that also in a carriage they, they used to travel in the cold in the snow even then after doing all that he said no i am not attached to this no good or bad coming to me so this is called the ultimate vedanta in the 13th chapter which is the title is happiness how one can become happy with this idea that i am not attached to anything so this is the way we should have to whether i stay here i move i sleep whatever i do all these movements are nothing bringing any result to me so this is the ultimate in the next month again uh, if the things changes if things become normal of course uh, in person we will have that talk in the Hindu temple itself or otherwise we will continue this live stream now let us conclude what today we have studied a part of the 12th chapter 
and also the 13th chapter. In the 12th chapter, the Janaki is telling that uh, I, as because I have realized the Brahman, so I don't have any action. Action, three types. The physical, then the bhachika, the vocal, and meditation, manasika, meditation. So this three type of action, physical, I go and worship in the temple, and bhachika, that I take the name of God, and manasika, I meditate. So this is completely, I am not doing. Why? Because I know I am that. Until and unless we are reaching to that height, that realization, what we should do? We should continue this practice. And that is, we should not make any mistake. That that is the reason everywhere, even the in the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, he is telling, Yajnanam Japa Yajnoshmi. Yajna means doing the good thing for the others. And of all these, Japa, taking the holy name of God, is me, the God. The Krishna is telling, I am that, Japa Yajna. So we have to take the name of God. But when you reach to the ultimate, what will happen? The name of God and the God will become one. And I will find that I and my God are not separate. We are the same. That is exactly what the Janaka is teaching. And he said... I don't meditate. Why? Because on whom I will meditate? When I am meditating, I need an object. But I see it is me. So obviously there is no reason to meditate. Constantly that knowledge is within me. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he was asking one devotee, he was sitting in front of Sri Ramakrishna and he closed his eyes and he was counting his beads. Then Sri Ramakrishna almost soliloquizing, he said, Ikhane Ishab Kano, why all this here? That means you are sitting in front of God. You should look to God, you should talk to God, you should feel blessed. But, unfortunate, even sitting before the God, he is closing his eyes and trying to find it within the heart. So that is the mistake you always do. I am that supreme. I am completely free from all bondages. Then that's why I don't have any sin. And I don't have any bondage. I don't have anything because I am that. And what will happen? Blessedness. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat